Hey, is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Stud Circle who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard, heard no horses. <laughs> <laughs> show is Horses Sing None of It. My name is Ralph Litwin and our guest today is a young lady who sings French folk songs obviously but she's also the reason why you can view our series in Staten Island and her name is Helen Levin. Thank Welcome you. to the show Helen. Thank you Ralph. It's my pleasure nice to, to have you here. Very much so. I got interested in French folk music a long time ago and today I'm going to sing a group of songs which really qualify as um, chanson poétique. Uh, that's a category of folk song that's um, typically or only French. Um, American songs where they're derived from uh, the farms or the prisons or the, um, the labor unions and um, uh, factories and so forth, uh, uh, the source for French music is, the poet, is poetry and uh, folkloric traditions of France. And I got interested in that um, when I was a student and required to take French. And uh, I felt, well, how am I going to get interested in, uh, really get interested? I was a folky anyway, American folk music, loved it, and a uh, hobbyist. And then I said, well, maybe I'll learn some songs. And then I, I encountered at one of the record stores, when you could listen to the records, Jacques Douai. And Jacques Douai um, represented to me uh, his repertoire, perfect. And in, in essence, he's kind of the, in quotes, Pete Seeger of France. Of that time, so I got hooked on that. The song I just sang is called Des Mons et Merveilles, one of Jacques Douai's uh, favorite songs, and um, it's from a movie um, back in 1942 called uh, Night Visitors. And Night Visitors was while the French were occupied, uh, they created a film, um, uh, the director Michel Carnet, um, he wrote a film, and uh, Jacques Prévert, the famous poet, did the dialogue for that film, the screenplay, and this song came from it. But I have to admit to you, I did the folk process thing, Ralph. I changed the ending of the song because the song ending was sad, and it was, uh, um, I'm gonna sing it now in English, my translation. The marbles and ides, the winds and the tides, and now the water meets a distant shore And you're sweetly dreaming Dreaming songs of some far different lands Gently move as you sleep Tender flower of the sands The marvels and ides The winds and tides And now the water meets a distant shore But in your eyes as you sleep Two little waves rise from the deep The marvels and ides the winds and tides, sirens of love beckon me to sleep. 
Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I took the liberty to do that translation. And the original song, though, was um, um, Two Little Waves, which he sees in her eyes, to drown him. And so I wanted to change that into Embrace Him instead, the waves. And um, I got interested, as I said, when, when I was a student, I had to learn the language. And um, my next song is a, um, a song which is uh, actually Jacques Dwey, one of the 15 songs approximately that Dwey uh, did music for. And uh, in this case, because he was basically an interpreter, I say was, he passed in 2004, um, he interpreted music folkloric music. He was not much of, he wasn't uh, that much into a uh, singer-songwriter thing. And so um, he took Rambeau's poem, um, which is called Le Dormeur du Val, The Sleeper of the Valley. It's a very powerful song. And the song is, um, it's a song of contrasts between life and death. And um, Rambeau, apparently Arthur Rambeau in 19th century, loved to to ramble in the nature in nature. And in this poem, he talks about greenery, and I'll translate that poem for you uh, in his very words. You'll see that the Dormeur du Val, the sleeper of the valley, is not is a young man, but he's not sleeping. It's he has two red holes on his side. And one only hears that at the very end of the song. So it's a it's emotionally um, uh, it's a popular in schools, I've heard in France, uh, they use that in written. Um, literature, that poem. Le Dormeur du Val. It's a little green hole of greenery, green in contrast to the red holes on his side. Where, this, where, where, a, river run, where a river sings as it runs through a slivery, silvery slivers of grasses, where the sun over the proud mountain shines. Lots of personification here. A little valley shimmering in light. A young soldier, open-mouthed, Hatless he sleeps, his neck bent in the fresh watercress. He stretched out on the grass under a cloud, pale in his green bed where the sunlight rains. His feet are in the gladiolas he sleep, smiling as a sick child would smile. And then it says, nature, rock him gently, he's cold, rock him warmly. The perfume no longer quivers his nostril. His hand upon his chest, he sleeps in the sun. He has two red holes on his side. He's tranquil. And that's the song. And uh, I, I think it has a lot of anti-war feelings to it in some ways. C'était trop de verdure où chante nos rivières, à tranchant pour le moment aux herbes des rayons d'argent, où le soleil de la montagne fièvre. C'est un petit val qui mousse de pion, un soldat jeune bouche ouverte cette nuit, et la nuque baignon dans le frais que semble d'or. Il était tendu dans l'herbe, sous la nuit pâle, dans son hiver où la lumière pleut. Les pieds dans la gaille, il dort, souriant comme sourirait un enfant malade. Et le fait un charme. Nature perce le chaudement et la poire. Les parfums ne font pas frissonner sa narine. Il dort dans le soleil, la main sous sa poitrine. Tranquille, il a de trop rouge au côté droit. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very moving poem. Almost made me cry. Oh, I'm so sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's good I, to I feel. Think it's wonderful, wonderful cry with happiness and of the of the charm and the the absolute passion for nature that Rambo had in that poem and in uh, some of his other poems. Um, and the next song I'm going to sing is um, there are there were other great uh, French people who are not with us, but in that folk 
revival that we had like in America during the 50s and they had around the same time the 40s and the 50s too in France unfortunately it's not around today too much a little little places they have the song I'm going to sing is Il Nore Fali now this song is a, a collaboration between a famous French poet named Louis Aragon and Léo Ferré who was the most to me quintessential superb composer and poet Léo Ferré, F-E-R-R-E, and Ferré, and uh, I'll go on. Il n'aurait fallu, and you could translate that moment, that il n'aurait fallu, it means it only took a moment. It would have been one moment more, and death would have taken me. But a hand came and took my hand. And in the poem, it tells its essence, like the French, they speak about love, but they don't say the word love. And so love came into his life, and he speaks at the end of the poem about how it was like a garden, like a wheat field with beautiful golden wheat, and a garden where uh, violets suddenly grew, and that's what the love he felt was like. Il n'aurait fallu, that's the poem of, um, of Louis Aragon, put to music by Ferré. Later I'll sing one by Ferré himself, yeah. Il n'aurait fallu qu'un moment de plus pour qu'on ne m'en vienne. Mais il ne m'a nu alors révolu, qui a pris la mienne. Qui donc a rendu leur couleur perdue aux jours aux semaines. La réalité a l'immense effet des choses humaines. Un front qui s'appuie à moi dans la nuit. Quand j'ai ouvert et tout m'a semblé comme un champ de blé dans cet univers. Rien qu'un mouvement ce geste endormant des jets qui me provoque un souffle posé moins une rosée contre mon épaule. Moi qui frémissais toujours, je ne sais de quelle colère le bras en suffit pour faire à ma vie un grand collier d'air. Un tendre jardin dans l'herbe où soudain le verbe me pousse Et mon cœur défunt renaît au parfum qui fait l'ombre douce Il n'aurait fallu qu'un moment de plus pour que l'amour vienne Mais il m'a nu alors revenu qui a pris la mienne Beautiful. Lovely song. Now, Helen, you're also an artist. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about your art and tell the folks how they can find out more about it? Yes, thank you. And not only that, Ralph, but I will mention there's a connection between my art and the songs because um, this, is, this music was full of its imagery and unusual imagery, which is why I loved it uh, and do love it, is the imagery is really derived from surrealism. The surrealism uh, that took place in Europe, you know, the surrealist movement of really tapping the unconscious, this creative urges and the different ways we think in our unconscious mind, the dream world, this they captured in their poetry and the song. And um, that expressed itself here in America in the abstract expressionist movement where they tapped uh, automatic drawing, which is automatism, they call it. And that's what I somewhat am influenced by because I'm a gestural artist. I paint abstractly. I'm very interested in composition in my work. And um, this is my artwork, an example, uh, improv. And I am influenced by music. I like the way improvisation and spontaneity occur in jazz, for example, and um, other, other music. And that it makes me parallel to these poets because they're influenced by the, uh, the surrealists, too. Um, my next song is a, um, a song um, called Les Temps Chimériques, which is, speaking of surrealism, that's a perfect example of imagination. Uh, Les Temps Chimériques, the imaginary pond. And um, it, it was written and composed by Leo Ferre. And it's, I think, one of his greatest, greatest songs. Um, and it's a short song, which 
says the following, but I can say it better if I read from a book which I, I actually made. Whoops, whoops, went way off. I made a translation of a um, of that song and put it into a book, and it's right here with me, and it's. Um, Les Temps Chimériques, uh, une chanson par Léo Ferré. And I, in this book, I have Jacques, I have Léo Ferré's, um, uh, the words I, I use in script and pictures I painted. And it's an accordion fold book with many, many pictures. Uh, I think they're, just by coincidence, uh, my paintings seem in that period to uh, have, um, uh, have a connection in some way. Uh, and I will just say to tell you the, the, um, uh, the meaning. Our most beautiful memories will flower on the pond of the soul. So our minds are like uh, the, the imaginary pond. We submerge the lousy memories right to the bottom, and the beautiful ones will float on top. And then the poem says, um, and one day, and we will, one day, for the, just for the pleasure, we will take a ride on the, we will take a ride on this imaginary pond only never to come back. And each, each verse, the second verse, tells how we submerge our bad memories. And one beautiful image in this poem, Ralph, I must tell you, is he says, but we will keep our, uh, the image of our, our heart at age 20. That beautiful white water lily you see on the pond, that's your heart at age 20. I love that. How true. It's so nice. And at the end of the song, he says, Alors, tout sera lumineux, mon ami. We're going on this pond, and never we will return, but then everything will be luminous. And that was very touching to me when I saw Leo Ferre sing that. Um, <coughs> Les temps chimériques. We should tell folks also that they can find out more about your art by going to oh www.helenlevin.com. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, yes, Ralph. Thank you for reminding me. It's on the screen, I'm happy to say. And my email address, too. Is, uh, it's on that website, too. Fleurissant sur les temps d'un lointain château, d'un lointain Espagne. Le joli vers le temps perdu, on m'accompagne. Et ce blanc n'est nulle part, c'est un cœur de vingt ans. Un jour, nous nous embarquerons sur les temps de nos souvenirs et referons pour le plaisir le voyage doux de la vie. Alors, nous nous embarquerons, mon doux Pierrot, mon tendre ami. Pour ne plus jamais, pour ne plus jamais revenir. Nos merveilles souvenirs se noieront dans les temps de ce lointain château, dans le lointain Espagne. Et nous ne garderons pour nous en ma compagne, quand ce monnaie nous part et ton cœur de vingt ans. Un jour, nous nous embarquerons sur les temps de nos souvenirs et referons pour le plaisir le voyage doux de la vie. Alors, nous nous embarquerons, mon doux Pierrot, mon tendre ami, pour ne plus jamais revenir. Alors, tout sera le ménage. My last song, um, which I'll sing uh, now and if necessary repeat, yes, is a song by a very wonderful uh, uh, man who was devoted to the work of the famous uh, French composer Eric Satie, and he, in fact, gave um, to the world the work that Satie had when he died and was not known, and he actually unearthed a lot of this stuff. He was a close friend of Eric Satie. Um, and uh, his name is Robert Cabi. Mm -hmm. 
Robert Cabé. And um, this song is, it's a love song, and it's, it's an, ad an adulation to a beautiful woman, clearly. And um, Bella, 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 que voulez-vous que je dise? Beauty, what can I say to you, to your beautiful face? Your eyes of sapphire, troubles, troubled like lakes and rivers and water. Um, unquiet, uh, as nervous as the waves. And quiet comme les ondes. Uh, and uh, many, many things about, you know, uh, your lips and your mouth that say crazy things. Your mouth is a, a crazy, crazy flower that says a beautiful thing. And it's, uh, that's kind of a song. Deborah says, I love you. <laughs> Funny, right? <laughs> so uh, I love that. Anyway. Bella, Bella, Bella. Bella, 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 que voulez-vous que je dise A votre trémousse exquise, les roses sont éclairées. Vos yeux de satire vont éclairer, qui est comme les ondes, des fleurs et des vagues de mer. Et j'en ai des races profondes, mais je suis pourtant désarmé par la bouche rose de mer, qui parle si bien sans parole. Et qui dit des mots sans pareil, fier délicieusement fort, éclose à Paris vos soleils. Belle, 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 que voulez-vous que je dise à votre trimousse exquise, les roses sont éloignées. Thank you. Have you had any opportunity to spend time in France? Yes, but not, not as much as you think. I, I was there a couple of years. I was there. I had an art show at a, um, a bank in uh, Nice in nice. June. In June in 2008, I, I had a, a, a lovely uh, espace cultural, a little bit of a gallery in a bank uh, in BNP Paribas. I'm giving you a treat <laughs> and here. Uh, and it was very, very nice experience. I had an exchange arrangement. Someone arrangement someone came to my home and I stayed in, in someone's home in, in, in Nice so I had a lot of fun to practice speaking French uh, six weeks of it so it was really fun sounds great it was nice on the Riviera in June yeah it was kind of nice my wife and I had a, a short trip to France we spent a few days in Paris and had a friend who lives in, in Paris show us around and and we hiked from Perpignan in the south of France Ooh. into Spain along the Vermilion oh, yeah. Coast. Oh, I it was say that. beautiful. Sounds great. Yes. Well, I'm going to sing another song uh, here. Um, it's, it's the only actually folkloric song that I put in this, and uh, it's a charming song called um, "Un Bon Matin à la Fraîche," a beautiful morning in a, a, a with a little chilly, chilly morning. And its story is about a man who takes his uh, hunting rifle and he. Um, goes along a path and he doesn't find a thrush or a, per, a partridge, but instead he finds a lovely uh, um, shepherdess. But unfortunately, she's sleeping under a tree and he won't dare wake her up. Then he gets the idea. He's going to uh, pick flowers and put them in her hand. Well, that isn't so advised, you know, to just pick flowers and put them in her hand. So the little chorus in the song that says, um, keeps repeating that it's chilly outside. She, her heart is chilly too, at the end of the song. So that I like that song. So we the only I can't attribute it to anyone. It's considered a trad, trad song. <laughs> Je suis parti sur la route, I la like him des fraîches. Avec mon fusil chassé, I la like him des fraîches. Je ne vis faire ni d'une cliver, I la like him des fraîches. Ni faisant à ramener, I la like him des fraîches. Mais j'ai vu une bergère, I la like him des fraîches. Avec ses moutons en frais, I la like him des fraîches. Mais elle dormait la bergère, I la like him des fraîches. Au pied d'un bel olivier, I la like him des fraîches. Belle affaire, mais que faire, I la like him des fraîches. Je n'osais pas la veiller, I la like him des fraîches. 
J.K. et Violette, I like, like some risky fashion. Et dans ses marais placés, I like, like some risky fashion. Mais le cœur est si proche, I like, like some risky fashion. Que son cœur se réveille, I like, like is a risky. Very lovely presentation. Thank Helen. you. Um, if, there's a, if there's time, I'll c I can do another song, if you like, a, a really old song um, that depends on you. Tell sure, me. we have about two and a half minutes. We do? Okay. Let's tell folks, again, they can find out more information about your art at HelenLevin.com. Thanks. I really appreciate that. And I exhibit many times in, uh, in, uh, in having an upcoming show, and so I'm always showing my work and happy to do that and happy to sing the combination. Um, the song I thought I would sing now is a really old song, and um, uh, it's called Cruelle de Partie. It's uh, a song written by, in the court of Henry IV in France uh, during the Renaissance, and it was written to his lover, who was uh, easily 30 or 40 years younger than she, he was, and um, he had to go off to war. Uh, and lead the armies, and he wrote this song or had this song written for her. And it used to be called Charmante Gabriel, now it's called Cruel des Parties, and uh, it's a very old song. Cruel des Parties, malheureux jour, comme si je sans vie ou sans amour, les jours de ton absence. Less than a minute to go, so let's just thank you again for being our guest here on Horses Sing None of It. Thank you so much, Ralph. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've always enjoyed over the years hearing you uh, play your very, very good instrumental uh, music, and um, 